All right, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to thank Thomas DiGiacomo, um, president of Engineering Product and, Product and Innovation for SUSE, uh, coming here and giving his talk. He's going to have to leave quickly after, the, uh, after his talk, so um, try to keep it questions to a limit if it gets into questions. So here's Thomas. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Hey, good morning, everyone. It's good to see that you have so much energy early in the morning, but uh, you will need a lot of energy for the coming two, three days. Thanks for coming to OSC, and we are always very happy and excited to see the community coming together. So, and I want to thank Doug and, and uh, everybody who helped and, and make that happen. It's a lot of work for people, and uh, they're already doing a great job. Thanks for them. So I'm Thomas, I'm a uh, SUSE employee and uh, working with engineers, with product managers and I'm very honored to be here as well. So I will try not to talk too much about SUSE, but I have to talk about SUSE a little bit. So uh, we are actually independent since March 15th. So we had a lot of parties and cakes around the world. You cannot really see that, but it's in Beijing, the Suzu Beijing office. The cake is, was huge, so there was food for maybe two weeks for 50 people in, in a single cake. And uh, some people say, well, you're not really independent, you're owned by uh, private equity, and so that's not being independent. And yes, we are more independent than in the past because we are not under the microfocus group anymore. That means we have Suzu HR people, we have Suzu finance people, we already had SUSE dedicated engineers, sales, product and marketing and all of that, but now we are getting all the functions under the green flag, except for IT for now. So we are still relying on microfocus IT for another 12 to 18 months. But we will move to a SUSE IT stack uh, in the future as well, and we hope to make it more green than it was in the past, more based on open source, obviously, as much as we can. So. We are working on that, uh, and I'm sure there are probably people in the room that are involved in those kind of discussions. I wanted to give a few numbers as well. So, SUSE today, we are about 1,800 people. Um, we make about 400 million of revenues per year, and the plan is to be in five years around 3,000 people and around 800 million revenues. I joined SUSE in 2016, and the company was 600 people. So, we are growing. We are welcoming more and more uh, people in the company. And with that, we realized that all the good culture, the open source DNA that SUSE has, we need to uh, bring that to the new people coming to us as well. And sometimes they come already with an open source background, but we decided to write an open source policy. So after 26 years without having an open source policy, we worked on an open source policy back in September last year. It's mentioning a lot of the open SUSE stuff. It's actually, there's a link in the SUSE open source policy to open SUSE um, uh, website as well. We joined the open chain compliance uh, to make sure that um, we were delivering as a company software in an open source compliant way as well. So we've done some of that. Uh, to also help new people when they join us to understand how uh, we do our things. Now, as you know, we are contributing to a lot of, of um, upstream projects, like Linux, OpenStack, stuff, all of that. I just wanted to highlight a couple of examples there of some of maybe smaller projects, but uh, that we pushed upstream. So on the left, you have OpenAttic. It's a um, storage manager, open source solution. It was open source but we pushed that to uh, Ceph upstream, so it's now part of Ceph upstream. The other example is Stratos. Stratos is a user interface for Cloud Foundry. We got that software from HPE. It was not open source, so we open sourced that. Uh, then it was on GitHub, but it was not part of the Cloud Foundry upstream, so we pushed that as well to Cloud Foundry upstream. And that's what we try to do. So as much as we can, open source is great, but we try to be upstream as well with the development that we do. And when they are not, we try to push them upstream and, uh, and contribute there. Airship is another one. Uh, if you're interested, that's 
under the OpenStack Foundation. It's a lifecycle manager to deploy containerized services. So we are planning to containerize OpenStack, containerize Ceph, and de uh, deploy and manage that with Airship. That, that could be a, an interesting thing to look at. That's it about SUSE. So what's great uh, with the way that OpenSUSE community and SUSE work is that I think we collaborate in a very unique way. So it probably started two or three years ago uh, with the Leap and Factory uh, and Tumbleweed split. And it took a little bit of time, but I think today the factory first concept is working very nicely. There are always things that, that we can imp improve, but whatever SUSE does for products, it goes into factory. And that's how we re release SLES. That's how we release the different flavors of SLES. And the latest child of that union is Leap 15.1. And uh, it was released, what, two, three days ago? I haven't upgraded yet. I wanted to do that on stage, but uh, I will not do it. I will do it later so that I can c continue with my slides. But that's a great uh, new thing. So if you haven't upgraded, you should probably try it. It seems to work quite nicely. It's boring, even people are saying. Boring upgrades are good upgrades. So congratulations to everybody involved in that. <laughs> so that's for the things between OpenSUSE and SUSE that works fine. There are things that are a bit more challenging. And we want to be transparent as well, so I don't want only to talk about good things, I want to talk about things that we need to improve and look from a different angle. So I'm going to use the Cubic and uh, SUSE CAS Container as a Service Platform example. Today, those two things are not tightly integrated. They are not actually working together. So on the left, you have version 3 of CASP. It's the current version, and we are going to release uh, CASP version 4 on the right. And what we are changing is we are aligning, from an architectural standpoint, the open source projects and components that CASP is using to be closer to Cubic, uh, because we think that will help us working together more uh, efficiently in the future. So from an OS standpoint, there are still discussion as well, because CASP was based on macro OS. Now we want to be able to run CASP, so the SUSE Kubernetes distribution on top of SLI, uh, including transactional upgrades. So there are still things that we need to discuss uh, with the Cubic community as well in, in there. We are moving. CASP was a bit lagging in terms of supporting the latest upstream Kubernetes releases. Kubernetes is released every quarter. Cubic was much faster to adopt and include the latest Kubernetes, but we were not able to do that with CASP. So we are changing this. We have different processes. And now we can be in sync much better with Kubernetes upstream. And that means that will help us as well to be more closer to Cubic with CASP, starting from CASP before. We changed the container engine in, uh, in CASP before, dropping, we were using the Docker community engine, uh, community edition engine in the previous version. We are moving to Cryo on top of Rancy. And that, again, is going to make us closer to Cubic, uh, which is Cryo-friendly since quite a while already. And we are pretty happy, actually, to drop some of the links with the Docker engine and, uh, and go cryo. On the networking side as well, tomorrow morning, I think there's a keynote about Cilium uh, from Thomas Graf. We are very interested by that project. We contribute to, to, to that. And uh, we are planning to bring Cilium in, in uh, CASP v4, too. So on the slides, I'm putting some reference to sessions that are happening today, tomorrow, and Sunday. So if you're interested by any of the topics that I'm mentioning, you can also join those sessions later. They will be much more interesting and detailed than what I can say about the, the topics. So one last thing I wanted to mention as well, it's Rook. Um, Rook is a project to help use Ceph for container uh, infrastructure. And we are actually building Rook now on top of CASP uh, with Cubic as well. And uh, it's almost all green. So it's from yesterday night. Uh, I hope today it's green as well on the top left side of things. Now, I talked about SUSE and OpenSUSE, but what's really making a difference is the people and, and the project. 
So I'm using a few screenshots from GitHub profiles. I hope people don't mind. I didn't ask them for permission to put their faces on the screen. I hope that's okay. Uh, but I wanted to highlight the fact that it's about people doing things. And whether they are SUSE employees or part of the open SUSE community and not SUSE employees, it doesn't really matter. But they are doing really cool, cool things. And I took just a few examples there. Uh, one of them is OpenFAS, so that's a, a serverless framework. Uh, there was a talk at OSC 18 last year, and it was a slideless presentation, uh, so no slides from Panos. Um, I also wanted to mention traffic, and uh, there's a great blog post on the Cubic website uh, by Panos, again, describing how to use traffic and the pod security policies of Kubernetes to do some ingress and uh, load balancing in a Kubernetes environment. Very cool stuff on top of Kubic. And the last one is Kata, Kata containers. So if you're not familiar with Kata, it's a kind of, it's a mix between a container and a VM. There are some part of the hypervisor in the container image. It's actually improving the isolation uh, of, of containers. It's run C compliant as well. And uh, the people there, they helped integrating Kata with Kubic, uh, with Suzuka's platform as well, uh, and, uh, and with Cryo. So the Kata project is actually uh, running their CI infrastructure on top of SLES, and uh, they use OBS as well, apparently, to build Kata, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, on the right, I added a cup of coffee for this morning. That's Vagrant, and uh, we're doing Dan is doing really good, cool things with Vagrant, building images as well. So you can check that uh, too if you're interested. Talking about building, so OBS, you all know that, right? So we can build with Kiwi uh, container images from OBS now and different flavor of, of, of container images for SLE, for, for LIP. The good thing is that then we have a, an open source registry to host the container images and scan them. So it's a good thing. We don't want to do Docker Hub. Uh, I don't know if you read the news recently, but like a few days ago, they discovered that there were about 2,000 container images on Docker Hub where the, the root password was blank. So some security concerns there, and I think what we're doing there is actually a lot better. And uh, SUSE is also working on a SUSE registry to be used for commercial customers and partners, and also tightly integrated with OBS. So again, there are talks about, the, about that uh, on Friday and, and tomorrow as well. Now I had two more projects that I wanted to highlight, and one is uh, Maven. And I think Friedrich is in the room. Uh, so based on the work, yeah, he's hiding somewhere. If you keep hiding, I will ask you to come on stage, actually. <laughs> so we have to give credit to people as well. So it's based on what the Fedora guys have done with RPM macros. But Friedrich and uh, a few other people, they've done a lot of work to make that work properly with Factory. And, uh, also building that quite nicely in OBS without adding cycles to OBS. It's pretty cool. A lot of packages. Um, and talking about packages, I'm very happy with Package Hub. I've been very excited about Package Hub in the past, and I'm even more now, because by default, all the lib packages are coming into Package Hub now. Uh, I think it's from Package Hub 15, but it started with 12 SP4 as well. So it's pretty cool. And, uh, I also wanted to give credit there because um, from a SUSE perspective, it helps us a lot to have thousands of packages on Package Hub uh, for our customers, actually. Now, we've, well, we've started the developer program inside SUSE. Um, I think Marco will be there if he's not already there. And there's a session tomorrow, there are actually two sessions about that. With the developer program, we are trying to address a gap that we think we have at a SUSE level. SLES is well known by ops guys, by sysadmins, but we are lacking visibility with the developer community. We don't want to become Ubuntu, uh, but still we need to be closer to the developers and show them all the great tools that we have 
thanks to the OpenSUSE community as well, OBS, OpenQA, all of that, bring that together and help uh, developers with, uh, with, with OpenSUSE and SLES. So we are also, that's why we do stuff like Vagrant as well, and we try to improve how we can deliver technologies to developers for developers. Last thing I wanted to mention, uh, we are doing hack weeks inside SUSE, so that's a week where engineers are free to do whatever they want to do. It doesn't have to be work related, it doesn't have to be, sometimes they don't even code anything or they don't even open a laptop, uh, they can do paintings or whatever, but most of the time engineers, when they have free time, they do stuff with computers. So I wanted to highlight a couple of projects. So there's a, a website where people are uh, creating their projects, or you can check the projects and join them. And there are a lot of OpenSUSE related projects there, where everybody is actually free. You don't have to be a SUSE employee to participate as well, so you're welcome to join that. So I just took three examples, one in the UI UX space, so the, 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 this is about uh, doing a UI to upgrade OpenSUSE. And uh, the, we have a UI UX team in the room as well, there's a session later this morning at 10.45, they're doing, it's not only about code, it's also about UI, UX, and documentation as well, so yeah, I would encourage you to, to go there and, and see what they're doing if you don't know what they're doing. Uh, there are also project, there's a project to bring some of the uh, visual, visual effects libraries um, in Package Hub, so that's the one uh, on the right. And finally, uh, one is about a specific uh, board from a setup box that someone wants to try to bring Leap uh, or probably Factory on. So it's end of June. If you have time, if you're interested, you could check the projects, you could add one of your projects there and, uh, and work together. And that's all I had for today. Uh, but I'm like to make it open as well. So if you have any questions, comments, or inputs, please, I think there's a mic in the back of the room or I can throw my mic to you as well, yeah, if you have questions. Do you have a question, Doug, or you're just going for coffee? Okay. So if you do have a question, you do have to come back here because it's uh, not wireless and I can't uh, bring it to you. Yeah, cool. So uh, I'll hand over to you, Doug, for some of the welcome stuff. You have to run. No. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Appreciate it. Uh,